A land with a rich culture, captivating landscape, mouth-watering food, a devastating yet uplifting history. Today we acknowledge a nation that faced and faces so much, yet stands stronger than ever. Mexico. The United Mexican States, a country with over 128 million people, consists of 32 states, with Mexico City being its capital. The nation is located in southern North America. Mexico encompasses the USA in the north, the Pacific Ocean in the east and west, the country of Guatemala and the Caribbean Sea in the southeast, and the Gulf of Mexico in the east. It covers 1.973 km squared of land. Five times smaller than that of Canada. Incorporates nine different nerve wracking terrains and ecosystems, with much of it being mountainous. This dramatic geographical challenge is not only unique and distinctive, but also breathtakingly beautiful. From jagged mountainous peaks, dry deserts, flourishing jungles, tropical forests, petrifying volcanoes, frantic rivers, deep canyons, Mexico truly has diverse geological features. Many wars have been fought to occupy this land. But the one thing that all Mexicans are proud of is their country, and they did and will always continue to fight for it. Mexican history is a weave of strength, struggle, loss, and above all, passion, which date back to over 13,000 years. Mexico was thriving with agricultural based villages and an ever growing indigenous population. The results, although, were devastating. Due to the desire to rule, political centers started competing for territory. The Toltecs, Mayan, and Aztecs, three very powerful native civilizations, grew an alliance and slowly ruled much of Mexico in 1427. This was soon to end when Spain discovered the land in 1519. It is said that to control Mexico City is to control Mexico, and thus this is what they did. Span Spain conquered the Aztec Empire in 1535 and renamed it New Spain, and ruled it for over 286 years. In 1605, due to trade links with the rest of the world, Mexico was composed into a globalized economy. Due to this, many people traveled to Mexico for trade. In the late 1800s, American and French revolutions were phenomenally getting more and more powerful. And due to this, in 1808, King Carlos III resigned back to Spain from Mexico and was swamped with war. Mexicans took this opportunity and led a revolution leading to their independence on 16 September 1810. But the struggle didn't stop there. Soon after the War of Independence, a civil war took place, devastating the nation once again. But this was stabilized by the government and led to somewhat economic growth. This ignited the flourishing of the first Mexican Empire, but ended fast as a rebellion caused the forging of the United Mexican States and Guadalupe Victoria became the first president. Many hardships were faced during this time. The Constitution of America had many territories that originally belonged to Mexico, therefore resulting in the Mexican-American War. The war ended in 1848 and Mexico surrendered over one-third of its territory, counting Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. 1860 resulted in the French occupation, but just five years later, once again, Mexico got granted its freedom. After these detrimental events, Mexico saw economical solidity and was helped by many nations over the world. But yet again, the struggle didn't stop. Another revolution led to another presidential election, only to be empowered with World War II. After the 80s, Mexico obtained a stronger economical backbone and with the North American Free Trade Agreement and with the help of both Canada and America, Mexico will only continue to become more resilient. With so much conflict in its history, the Mexican culture has seen various changes over the years, much of it influenced by the ancestors, the Aztecs and Mayans. Being a 10th most populous country in the world, 62% of its inhabitants are the Mestizo. The Mestizo race is used to describe Spanish-speaking Latin Americans with a European and indigenous background. 93% of the population speaks Spanish, making it its na national language. Mexicans are known for large families and, uh, and acknowledge each other with great respect. Mexico has a rich, diverse, and colorful culture, one of the most interesting in the world. To say they are proud of the traditions won't even describe their passion. 
Some of the most influential contrivances in the Mexican culture are music, dance, and of, of, above all, food. From tacos to tacos and tacos. Wait, and uh, chilaquiles, a delicious breakfast dish, breakfast dish and chiladas that date back to indigenous roots of the Mayans and much, much more. Mexico is known for its celebration. Some of the annual custom and tradition include the Day of the Dead to honor those who have passed away, Independence Day, and much more that will leave you smiling. As of 2020, the population of Mexico is at a peak of 128.6 million people, 91 million more than in Canada. That's 65.6 people per square kilometer. Currently, Mexico is in stage 3 of the demographic transition model, meaning that there is a declining birth rate and very low death rate, but an ever-increasing population. Birth rates are 17.6 births per 1,000 people and death rates are 5.4 deaths per 1,000 people, with the life expectancy being 75 years old. You can clearly see the imbalance there. The population pyramid of Mexico di dictates that it is one of the most advanced developing countries in the world, as it somewhat resembles that of developed countries. Much of the population is in their working age of 25 to 54, and the youth and teen are moderately equal balanced, equally balanced with 26% and 16% respectively. The median age is 29 years old compared to, to Canada of 40 years. This will only become more on par with developed countries in the coming years. Even though Mexico has the 15th highest GDP in the world of $1.269 trillion, compared to 1.736 in Canada, it still lacks the fundamentals to be considered a developing a developed country. To be considered a developed country, you must at least have a GDP per capita of 12,000 US dollars. Contrastingly, Mexico only has a GDP per capita of 9,800 US dollars. Even though it beats the threshold for quality of life, quality of life and other characteristics of developing countries, Mexico is still considered a mid-developed country, or one of the most advanced developing countries. Mexico, Mexico's economy is a market-based economy, meaning that much of the economy depends on citizens' and small businesses' decisions and are controlled by free will rather than the government. Although many advantages come with this, it also has various disadvantages like inequality of wealth, poor working conditions, and environmental side effects, as everyone works solely for themselves. The United States is Mexico's fundamental trading partner, with a, which according to data, purchases 77.5% of Mexican exports. Other trading partners include Canada, Germany, and China. Exports include vehicles, which account for one-fourth of all exports, electric machinery, oil, petroleum, vegetables, beverages, and etc. But with such a high GDP and quality of life, Mexico still faces many condemnatory controversies. One of the two major issues in Mexico is lack of clean water. With a spiraling and growing population, the access to clean water is getting more and more scarce. More than 50% of the population faces lack of access to clean drinking water, compared to 0.2% in Canada. With such a great population, Mexico is unable to provide everyone with this commodity. Other factors also come into play, like aging pipelines, which lose around 35% water during dispensation. Natural disasters like droughts, earthquakes, and flood also lead to water contamination and dissolution. Due to various isolated regions and much of the country being rural and far apart, it is difficult to provide everyone with fresh water therefore resulting in much agricultural activities being done with polluted water as there are no regula regulations in seizing this. This further on affects the health of the future generations which can result in deadly health consequences like cancer. It also results in more plastic use as more bottled water gets consumed. Research indicated about 480 liters of bottled water per person a year. With lack of clean water being such a big issue, it doesn't help that criminals don't get the punishment they deserve. The criminal justice system in Mexico is quote-unquote worthless. 
Research shows that 98% of charged crimes committed in Mexico tend to never get solved. On top of that, Mexico also has the most drug, drug cartels in the world and, riches, and the richest drug lords. This is something that the Mexican government needs to ameliorate. Due to this, other issues arise like violence, military abuse, torture, kidnappings, police, police executions, and much more devastating factors. And an article on the New York Times headlined a story in which 31 suspected gang, mem gang members were arrested for having two and a half tons of marijuana and 44 pounds of cocaine in two drug labs. Have, however, just a few days later, the case was closed as the judge could not find an, enough appropriate evidence and almost all suspects were granted freedom. This is just one of many criminal charges that get let off in the United Mexican States. With no one to solve these and prevent them, these situations will only get more and more vigorous. Aside from its detrimental matters, Mexico is a great place to live in. It's affordable, welcoming, and breathtakingly beautiful. It has an inspiring history, colorful culture, and wonderful people. With the help of other great nations, Mexico is bound to get a stronger foundation and possibly even end its drug war. As I said before, the one thing Mexicans are proud of is their country and they will overcome any struggle to fight for it. With everyday improving education and healthcare systems, Mexico will undoubtedly improve its already exceptional quality of life. For it is a country of hope, determination, struggle, joy, and above all, love.